Today is Thursday, March 11th, and you're listening to an emergency episode of Plastic Weekly. Hey, everybody. Um, Thanks for downloading this episode. This is an emergency ep- <laughs> an emergency episode of Plastic Weekly. I'm here in Quebec City, uh, where the 2017 IFSC General Assembly just wrapped up. For the last couple of days, the IFSC Executive Board has been uh, meeting together. The national federations have been attending a variety of clinics and workshops. And uh, today, the Plenary Assembly, which was all of the uh, participating nations, which I think was uh, 33 of them this time, Uh, They got a chance to chat and finally vote on some big issues. Uh, The press conference finished up about an hour ago. Uh, I've just gone over all my notes, and I'm hoping to, uh, to tell you guys what's going on. There's a lot of huge stuff that came out of this event that you need to know about. You can always go to the IFSC Facebook page. Uh, and they actually have the video from the press conference there. It's about an hour long. It is pretty long. There's a lot of questions uh, in French as well um, and a bunch of different accents. So it might be a little hard to get through, but if you want to, watch it. Otherwise, I'm going to try and rock through everything as quickly as I can. I got five big topics for you. Uh, uh, these matter a lot. So uh, I hope you guys uh, get some value out of this stuff. The first thing uh, that matters, and it's some great news for uh, our American listeners, uh, is uh, in terms of elections. So uh, the Pan-American Council, which is the uh, council that determines policy for North and South America, has elected your very own Chris Danielson as the new Secretary General for the Pan-American Council. Uh, He's currently, of course, the chair of the USA Climbing Rules Committee. Uh, And he's also the administrator of the Root Setting Clinic and Certification Program. So that is one more voice on the Pan Am Council uh, from the United States. Uh, Of course, he joins Peter Torchicolo, I hope I pronounced that right, who uh, is uh, currently the treasurer and uh, and still the treasurer after this round of elections. Uh, And Maria Izquierdo from Canada is still going to be the chair of the Pan American Council. There were also some elections uh, in different uh, continental councils and in the executive board itself, but I don't have the names written out and because they're in foreign languages, I'm not even gonna try, Uh, but I'm sure you can find that information on the IFSC website uh, coming pretty soon. The next topic is about the Olympics, of course. Um, And can you believe there are three topics uh, that are almost bigger than uh, than the Olympics? But let's talk about the Olympics first. Um, We'll break it into two parts. First of all, about the qualification process to attend the Olympics. And secondly, the actual format uh, of how uh, the Olympic Games will run uh, in the climbing section. Uh, So first of all, unfortunately, the qualification process for the Olympics has yet to be confirmed. Um, Apparently, the IFSC is waiting on guidelines from the International Olympic Committee, that's the IOC. Um, While we thought, you know, we spoke to Maria uh, earlier last week, it seemed like there was a pretty good uh, idea that this would be finished up, but apparently they're uh, going to wait a little bit longer uh, to hear what values the IOC uh, considers important, uh, because apparently all of the sports, not just climbing, but all of the competitive sports uh, coming up for the 2020 Olympics, Um, uh, may have changes to how they qualify athletes, not just climbing. Uh, So they're going to wait a little while. Based on the conversation in the press conference, it still seems like the fundamentals we talked about in the last episode will be present. Uh, It still sounds like uh, uh, there will be a maximum of two athletes per gender per country uh, at the event. Um, And speaking to Sean McCall, who is uh, there at the press conference, it seems like the athletes are are cool with that idea, even the ones from the countries where there may very well be more than two strong qualified athletes. uh, They seem to think that it is important that uh, folks from all around the world get a chance to take part. Uh, And it still seems like there will be a a mix of using the world rankings and the world championship event uh, and a Pan Am event to qualify. So it seems like those fundamentals are still there, but they're not confirming. They're not releasing any information just yet until uh, they get guidance from the IOC. Now for the 2018 Buenos Aires uh, Youth Olympics, 
Apparently, they are decided on how that format will work, uh, or sorry, how the uh, qualifications will work to go to the 2018 Buenos Aires uh, Olympics, and they're going to announce those in the coming days. Uh, apparently, the IFSC has shared those recommendations with the national federations and the uh, national Olympic committees uh, throughout uh, the North and South America, um, but they aren't being released just yet, uh, but it sounds like they are uh, for, sur for sure decided. So that's good because that's probably about a year and a half away. Now, in terms of the Olympic format and what climbing at the Olympics will actually be like, it's pretty much what you expected. Uh, although uh, the Athletes Commission, it sounds like, had a really big role in shaping uh, how it will work. Climbing, of course, is separated into three different disciplines, bouldering, speed climbing, and uh, lead or difficulty. And... Uh, Unfortunately, we all know that uh, there is only one set of medals per sex that are assigned uh, to climbing for this Olympics. So we will have to use a combined format to decide who gets the Olympic gold medal in climbing for 2020. Uh, now, things things are changing a little bit. Uh, what's going to go on at the Olympics is, is that you will have your 20 athletes, because we are limited to 20 athletes uh, at the Olympics. They will partake in a bouldering qualifier, a speed qualifier, and a difficulty qualifier. And then the uh, the combined ranks will be calculated from all of those athletes. And only then will the top six from that combined score move on to finals, where again, they will climb some bouldering, some speed, and some difficulty. And then again, their combined rank will be calculated. Uh, so nobody's going to be eliminated specifically for bouldering. Nobody's going to be eliminated specifically for lead or for speed. You will compete in all three disciplines. Your combined rank will be decided, and the top six combined ranks will move on to finals. Now, interestingly, this format is going to start showing up sooner than we think. It's going to start showing up at Pan Ams and World Championships this year because uh, it is important to the Olympic uh, community that the way you qualify for the Olympics is how you will compete at the Olympics. They want you to compete at the Olympics the exact same way that you qualified for it. So you can expect in Montreal uh, uh, this, uh, this fall, you can expect in the World Championships starting this year that... You will, of course, have your bouldering event and your difficulty event and your speed event. But after the qualification rounds for the bouldering, the lead, and the speed, they will take a combined rank uh, from all of those athletes that competed in all three of them, and they will take the top six right away. And then, while everybody goes on to compete in the semis for bouldering and the semifinals for difficulty and the semifinals for, uh, uh, for speed, those six will be reserved to compete in the combined finals. So effectively, for bouldering speed and lead, you will have a qualifiers and a semis and a finals. But after the qualifying rounds for the bouldering speed and lead, they will choose the top six from the combined rank. And they will then go on to compete an extra day and compete again in another round of bouldering speed and lead, just the six uh, of them, uh, to determine who has the best combined rank. Uh, I'm not sure if that made sense. I hope it did. It took a while in the press conference to really figure out how it works, but it effectively means that if you want to uh, compete in the individual disciplines and in the combined, you're going to be doing a lot of climbing. You're adding effectively an extra day of all three of those disciplines uh, to uh, uh, qualify for the Olympics or to compete in the Olympics. Um, but ultimately, I do think that's fair. It means if you want to show up to the World Championships, uh, you can still just be a boulder, you can still just be a lead climber or a speed climber, or you can maybe do two of them or three of them. It's totally up to you. Uh, but your base, uh, the way they base the rankings, the way they judge you as a combined athlete is right from the qualification round. Uh, and that way, um, uh, you have to show off those skills first thing, rather than maybe losing your chance to gain ranks because you happen to not make it into bouldering semis, but you still did really well in lead and uh, and speed, they're going to calculate everything right off the bat. So it's still fair for everybody to get that score right away. And you're going to have your top six chosen, it seems, right out of qualifiers. Okay, that was topic number two, the Olympics. Let's move to topic number three, and that's events. <clears throat> 
So first of all, uh, I kind of mentioned it already. Montreal uh, is confirmed to host the 2017 Youth Pan American Championships. Uh, that's going to be happening towards the end of September. Uh, from what I understand, the event will end. The final day will be October 1st of 2017. And the starting date is to be determined. And that's based on how long they think the event is going to take. Um, I think clearly some of that uncertainty is from this new, uh, this new format involving a separate combined event. Uh, because that will add some time that has normally not been present at previous Pan Ams. Um, <clears throat> but speaking to Maria Izquierdo, the Pan Am Council will be meeting to discuss a lot of old rules uh, uh, um, to confirm some of the policies uh, that haven't been discussed in the Pan Am uh, Council for a while. So that is currently up in the air, but it will take place late September in Montreal. The youth Pan Ams are coming back uh, uh, to Canada. Uh, also confirmed, of course, uh, the 2018 World Youth Championships will be held in Central Saanich. Uh, that's a small town just north of Victoria, British Columbia, up here in Canada. They had previously hosted the World Youth Championships back in 2013, so they know what they're doing. Presumably, uh, they'll be adding a an official bouldering wall in this case. The last time they held the World Youth Championships, bouldering was not included uh, in Youth World Championships, but now it is. Uh, so we expect that their facility, which already has world-class speed climbing and world-class difficulty walls, we expect that they will be adding uh, some world-class bouldering walls to match. Open World Championships. There's going to be some changes uh, to qualify for the Olympics. Of course, uh, uh, they want you. Uh, it, ex it looks like they'll want you to compete and do well at the uh, at the uh, World Championships. Now, currently, Open World Championships are held on even years. Uh, we had a World Championship back in 2016. The next one will be in 2018. But the problem with the Olympics also being held on even years is that that means. Currently, with this system, you would qualify for the Olympics two years ahead of the event. So they are going to be changing the date of World Youth Championships to odd-numbered years. They are still going to commit to the 2018 World Championships, but uh, after 2018, they will switch to odd numbers, and so we will have another World Championships in 2019, and presumably going forward, they will be held on odd years in 2021, 2023, uh, and so on. Uh, and then finally, uh, because there has been some speculation that as part of the qualification for the Olympics, a Pan-American or a continental uh, uh, score will be included in how you can make it to the Olympics, the United States has offered or nominated themselves up to host an open Pan-American event, presumably in 2019. Uh, the location has not been determined. I got this information from, uh, from the folks present at the press conference. None of them were American, so I don't really have any more details for you at this time, but it looks like the United States may hold uh, the first uh, Pan-American open event in quite some time. Oh, I've never done one of these in one take, but we're going for it. Number four, uh, and this is a huge one, Bouldering lead and speed world cups are going to be different uh, starting this year. There have been some serious changes to the rules. Not many, but the ones they made uh, seem to be real big. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about, we'll talk about uh, lead climbing first. Uh, as a lot of you know, and some of you don't, uh, there is a time limit when you are uh, doing a difficulty or a lead route in qualifiers. Uh, if you climb longer than six minutes, they will call you off. So if you're still on the wall after six minutes of climbing, uh, they will finish your attempt where you were and call you off the wall. Uh, it is switched up to eight minutes uh, for finals, and they have reduced that back to six minutes. So now in finals, where you uh, normally get eight minutes to complete your finals, all rounds, qualifiers, semis, and finals are being reduced to a six minute uh, time frame. It seems like athletes aren't too concerned about that. All of these changes I'm going to talk about uh, are really concerned a lot with how climbing is presented on television and making sure that uh, it can be scheduled well for the television uh, uh, programming. So I understand this. It'll make the events a little bit shorter. Hopefully, it'll also uh, stop the climbs from being such endurance fests. I know there's a lot of concern that some of the routes are actually fairly easy and have too many opportunities to rest. Uh, maybe if they cut back uh, this, this time limit from eight minutes to six minutes, it will hopefully eliminate some of the rests uh, and make the routes a little bit harder, which some athletes are certainly asking for. 
In speed, a couple changes. First of all, uh, currently you are allowed one false start. Um, that is starting climbing before the uh, the uh, the start signal has gone bef um, before they disqualify you. But now uh, there will be no false starts allowed. Uh, if you make one false false start, you will be disqualified. I don't know many speed climbers over where I am, but I imagine that will be something that might be a little bit contentious. Um, but hopefully it means that there will be more respect paid to the start timers uh, and, and let that sport move a bit more smoothly. The other one, which is very interesting, also regarding the starts of the speed climbs, is that currently... Uh, when you go up to your wall, uh, uh, you will be advised to, first of all, take your position. Shortly after, somebody will ask if you are ready, and that's really them just saying the word ready. And then after that, there's a single beep, and that beep is what tells you to start climbing. Uh, so you're just waiting in silence for a single indicator. Now, uh, to go along with that removal of the disqualification uh, for a false start, they're switching to what they refer to as a Formula One uh, timer. So if you think about a uh, uh, car racing, you get a beep, 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 beep. So you get a bit of a countdown and you can prepare for when your start is going to be. It makes your start more predictable and it should uh, reduce the number of false starts in the sport. Now, I forgot to ask this. Um, currently, speed climbing, uh, you're only given that audio cue. There are no visual cues as to when to start. But it sounds like based on what they were saying, and I regret not confirming, but it sounds like there will also be a visual indicator. They may have a light system uh, to also tell you when to start. Anybody that's uh, that's familiar with uh, um, breaking or things like that knows that sound is one of the slowest uh, forms of energy to move. Um, that's why in running races, you don't only get uh, a sound, an audible cue to start your run, you actually get a tactile cue in the starting blocks that your feet feel. Um, and it looks like by using this lighting system, it'll be able to create more accurate starts uh, for the competitors on the wall. And now finally, for bouldering, uh, <laughs> this one's fun. Um, in qualifiers for, for World Cups and for uh, climbing competitions, uh, there's a system used that we like to refer to as uh, five on, five off. Uh, you're cycled through the problems. You have five minutes on the wall. And when your timer is done, uh, then you are done climbing. If you're on the wall uh, when your uh, uh, timer ends, then you have to come off the wall. It's the same thing in semifinals. Bouldering has always used a different format for the finals round that is uh, typically called four plus. And that means you are on your wall with a four minute timer. But when that four minutes runs out, you are still allowed to continue an attempt if you're already on the wall. Uh, so if I'm getting uh, near the uh, near the finish and the timer goes, I don't have to let go. I can still keep working towards my finish uh, until I let go. Uh, that apparently is a huge problem when it comes to scheduling events, and I know that as somebody that has had to schedule a few, it makes it very unpredictable because, as you often see, a climber will wait until their timer is down to the last 5 or 10 seconds. Then they will get on the wall right at the end of their time and take an attempt that is could be 30, 45, a minute outside of their timer, making it very unpredictable how long a competition will go. They are removing the plus in the four plus format. Finals will now run four minutes, and if you are on the wall when your timer goes, you must get off the wall. So, boulders, it is time to change up your game, get used to a four minute timer for finals, and don't expect to be able to run onto the wall at the end of, uh, of your time. Again, this is to help with television scheduling, which I totally understand. And speaking to uh, to Sean McCall, the athlete representative, it seems like the current World Cup athletes are very understanding of this change. They totally get it. I asked if uh, if they had considered, instead of using four minutes, using a typical five-minute timer for this. And they said, while it had been discussed, the four-minute timer makes it a much more accessible uh, sport for television programming. So they are going to rock with that. And that change is probably a big surprise for a lot of us out in the climbing world. I certainly didn't see it coming. It's important to note that as quickly as this kind of thing can change, it can always change back. Uh, so while I expect that all the World Cups this year will follow those three changes, again in bouldering, it's now four minutes instead of four plus. In lead climbing, it's now only a six minute finals instead of eight minutes. In speed, false start gets you disqualified right away. They could just as easily go back next year and decide to change those back to what they currently are. 
Personally, I totally understand the changes from a programming perspective. Now that we are an Olympic sport, it's really important that we start thinking more about the spectators of the sport. We need to grow that audience so that we can get more sponsors, so that we can get more money to our athletes and to our organizers to hold better events and also to pay our athletes just because they put in so much work for no money. And it's really time that we start thinking about how we can uh, improve returns for all that effort that they put in. So again, I think it's a good idea, uh, but it might be a little bit hard on some people but uh, I'm trying to get you this information right now so you can go into your training tomorrow and uh, and hopefully be able to respond the final uh, big thing I wanted to bring to you guys kind of relates to uh, the watchability of the sport bouldering needs to change um, speed climbing is easy to understand and watch difficulty is easy to understand and watch for the most part even though it's hard for you know TV cameras to get up and kind of uh, really make you understand how hard they're climbing up on a difficulty climb. But bouldering lives in a brutal format. You and I know as climbers uh, that bouldering is incredibly intense. Um, it's got unbelievable moments uh, where you see just true hard human work creating clutch situations and just pulling out effort where you thought there was none left. Bouldering is an awesome, awesome physical effort but the format is really hard for viewers to understand. The scoring is brutal. The format of having multiple climbers out on different problems at a time spread out over a time span is very difficult to understand and keep track of the scores. Bouldering needs to change. The IFSC is aware of this. They've been aware of it for years, but they've been very busy trying to get everything ready for the Olympics, and so it's had to take uh, a spot on the back burner. Now that we're in the Olympics, at least for now, they are ready to start putting some time into exploring new options for bouldering formats. They're aware that it is very uh, difficult to watch, very difficult to understand. You and I have all tried to explain bouldering scoring to our friends. Now we're going to start figuring out how to make it better. The IFSC says they are going to start looking into other options, and over the next four or five months, they're going to uh, hopefully report back with new recommendations. Sean McCall will be talking to the Athletes Commission and trying to put together a proposal specifically from the athletes uh, on the World Cup circuit. But when you think about it, all of the cool bouldering formats don't come out of the IFSC necessarily. They don't necessarily come out of the World Cup athletes that spend most of their time traveling and competing. Most of the cool board bouldering formats come out of the gyms and the communities that are willing to throw cool comps and try new things and think of ridiculous formats and times and ways to make bouldering super cool or ways to just, you know, throw a wrench in the system and make it more exciting for us and our friends and our communities. So now is our chance as local gyms, uh, as bouldering fanatics, as gym managers, as team coaches, now is the time to start trying new things and sharing them with the rest of the international climbing community, no matter where you are. But of course, we're talking about North America. So all you guys in the States, everybody up here in Canada, time to start thinking about new formats and trying new competitions. If you have a blank spot in your competition calendar this year, get together with your root setters, get together with your coaches and your managers and get together with the great climbers in your community and start messing around with new ideas for how to run a bouldering competition. Get somebody to video it, not necessarily a company, just get some guy with a camcorder to tape it. Get an audience in there making a lot of noise. Think about how you're gonna score it. Think about how the timing is gonna work. Think about if you wanna have elimination rounds. Think about if you wanna pull it like, you know, the old Battle of the Bubble, if you wanna run it a little bit more like uh, um, like Adidas Rockstars. Think about everything. Me, personally, I'm a closet Counter-Strike fan, and so I, uh, I'm thinking about all these different formats from the world of, of gaming. Now's the time to have some crazy ideas, mess around with some formats, and start putting them to the test. In the next four or five months, the IFSC intends to start proposing new formats for the World Cup circuit. And the second the World Cups change, your national competitions are gonna change. And that means your divisionals and your regionals and your locals are gonna start changing. And we have the opportunity right now to really affect how bouldering uh, uh, is presented and how it's climbed and how it's scored. Some of the values uh, that were mentioned that are important uh, in a bouldering format. First of all, scheduling. If we want these events to be televised, then it has to have a relatively predictable schedule so that uh, TV stations can start to fit this into their programming 
and know exactly when it's going to end. There also has to be an understandable progression for the spectators. They need to be able to track along in their head how people are doing. Right now, we're reliant on uh, you know MCs and commentators who themselves have a very hard time of keeping track of things because with the format we have and with the understanding of what control is um, and, of course, the multiple, um, multiple athletes going at once, it's so hard to keep track of what's going. And so understanding who's in the lead and who's behind and how much people need to do to catch up is impossible. So we need a better way of communicating and, uh, and knowing how people are scored. And then finally, and this is especially important to the athletes, we still need to choose a format that is fair for the climbers. We need something that doesn't require or doesn't uh, doesn't rely on luck, that doesn't rely on odd circumstance or unusual uh, unusual uh, nitpicky things. We need uh, some sort of scoring format and timing format uh, that reflects the ultimate strength and ultimate skill of our climbers. We don't want something. Uh, completely out of left field that makes it feel like things are left up to chance it needs to put the best climbers on top every time so think about that think about the scheduling and a predictable schedule think about something that's easy to explain to your friends the ones that ask oh is it whoever gets to the top fastest those guys you got to be able to explain it to them in two sentences or less and you need to think about fairness for the competitors so this is our chance to do something cool. I want you guys to think about that. And uh, if anybody thinks of any really cool formats, send me uh, send me an email. Send me a voice memo. It would be awesome because then I could play it to other listeners of the show. Um, and if you guys have some cool feedback, I would love to start playing them here on the podcast so that we can start sharing them around the rest of the community. Um, that is uh, all I'm going to say for now. That was five big updates. Um, share this podcast with your friends so that this information can get out as fast as possible. But that is it for now. Keep an eye on climbing media around the world over the coming days for more information. Special thanks to Maria Izquierdo, Aurelie Subershiko, and Eric Lachance for their work in organizing this excellent assembly. Them and everybody at the FQME did such hard work to make this thing come together, and it looks like all of the delegates had a great time and a lot of work got done. Our theme music is by Javelin. Plastic Weekly is currently self-funded, and man, am I not kidding, this is self-funded. Uh, it's uh, it's just me in a hotel room after a seven-hour drive with another seven-hour drive tomorrow on my own dime, uh, and I'm not airing ads yet, so please support me in what I'm doing by subscribing on iTunes or Google Play. It's totally free. You just got to leave a review, subscribe, share it with your friends, and you have no idea how much it helps me and the podcast. You can find more information and relevant links about this episode at plasticweekly.com. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can send me an email to tyler at plasticweekly.com with your comments, questions, compliments, criticisms. Just tell me you're out there. Somewhere. Good luck to the climbers who are competing in U.S. Open Sport and Speed Finals tonight. We'll be thinking about you. See you guys on Thursday. (laughs) 